Todd, everything about Fallout 5, now go. Well, there were some things I said. So we just got a fantastic new interview from Den of the Geek, where he interviews Todd Howard and the cast of the new Fallout TV show on Amazon Prime. He asked Todd some questions about Fallout 5, and it turns out Todd actually has something planned. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in today's interview. So I asked some of our, our games fans, but I should ask Todd in particular, and they wanted to know, are you aware that they call you God Howard? And how do you feel about that? <laughs> My kids are still wildly unimpressed. Yeah, no idea how you're meant to respond to that one. Jonah, I think in a recent interview, you mentioned that one thing you liked about Fallout was how every story in the games can be self-contained to the extent that this uh, series could be considered Fallout 5. Wow. And I think that may have been misinterpreted in some areas. Would you like to uh, clear the air on that now? Is this quote unquote Fallout 5? I think so many people got so angry and upset about this. And I think he was just trying to talk about it from the director's point of view that they wanted this to be just like the video games. This quote unquote Fallout 5? I think it would be very presumptuous for someone to uh, to to assume that we'd reach the caliber of the games. But I think the, the conversation with me and Todd from the very beginning was the way the Fallout universe has been constructed. All of these stories with different characters connecting to the same larger universe. And for us, as a as something to adapt, as a world that we could contribute to, it's just irresistible. It means you have all of the benefit of beautiful storytelling that, that, that Todd and, and, and the rest of the team has contributed to, but we also get to tell an original story within that world. Just as, as writers and filmmakers, it's just a dream come true. I think we made Fallout 6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know all about Fallout 5. We're not telling anyone. Okay. Todd, everything about Fallout 5, now go. Well, there were some things I said, don't do this, because we are going to do that in Fallout 5. So the last time Todd spoke about this, he said that they had a one-pager on Fallout 5. And clearly they know what they're going to do for that game already, he just said that. And I know a lot of you are probably wondering, when does Fallout 5 actually come out? When's the release date? And I just want to break down what we actually know so far. Because during the Microsoft Xbox acquisition of Zenimax and Bethesda, and then the following legal battle they had with the FTC, there was this document that got leaked about Bethesda's release schedule for the next four years. Now, even though this document is outdated, it was originally written when Microsoft was buying Bethesda. So that was like 2020. And back then they were saying that Starfield was going to come out in 2021. But it then released two years later in 2023. So with that in mind, we can expect the Elder Scrolls 6, which is listed here, to be releasing in early 2024, to be delayed by another two years as well. Assuming everything goes perfectly well in the development schedule, the Elder Scrolls 6 will be releasing in 2026. Six. Now, Fallout 5 isn't even listed on this sheet. We only know it's coming because Todd Howard said it's coming after The Elder Scrolls 6. So that would give Fallout 5 a release date of 2028. And I think it's kind of reasonable, if not maybe even later. Because we don't know if they're going to update the creation engine again, if they're going to move to a new engine. I'm assuming they'll just stick with the creation engine. Now, there is also a Fallout 3 remaster listed here, and that's never been mentioned by anyone. So it'll be interesting to see when that comes out, and hopefully it gives us something to do in between. Beyond that, we also have the Fallout 4 next-gen update, which is theorized to be releasing in April alongside the Fallout TV show. Kind of like Netflix did with The Witcher 3. Todd, everything about Fallout 5, now go. Well, there were some things I said, don't do this, because we are going to do that in Fallout 5. But I think the intent of when you see that, we it's how we approached it. I think it's one of the things unique about this sort of, we'll call it, you know, genre translation of something, whether it's a game or a comic or some other book, is that... It wasn't a translation of an existing story. It was, what would the next thing be? It just happens to be a TV show. And that was kind of the approach to it, the same way we approach games and finding a location, finding tone, but still hitting on those authentic fallout things that we like the games to have. What does it feel like to be in the vaults and enter the wasteland? Um, what is it like to have these different characters with different motivations? And so that was the approach that you know these people took. And, uh, it was great. I think it's interesting that they took the same approach as they do for the video game development and applied it to the TV series. Todd, what do you think as a medium, TV or even just live action in general can bring to the story that maybe a game couldn't necessarily? Or how, how would it translate? I mean, look, in many respects, a game is just one portal 
into viewing this world, yes, you're in control. But for a lot of people, that can be a bit intimidating. They're not going to sit down and learn a game. There's like a whole process of learning. With doing it in the TV format, it can still be very cinematic. Sort of Jonah says, like we're doing an eight-hour movie here. And it brings it to, if you're a fan of the series already, you can jump in and experience the next chapter in Fallout. If you're not a fan and a bit intimidated by jumping in a game like that, you can experience everything that's great about this world by just clicking your button and enjoying it. I think that's really interesting because I had some friends when they were watching the Witcher 3 or the Witcher Netflix series and they were like, oh, this series is really cool. And I was like, you know, this is actually based on a series of books and it has a series of video games that are based on the books as well. And he was like, oh, never heard of that. So I really hope that people who check out this series actually go and check out the games as well. Fallout, the, the games and the franchise has such a distinctive aesthetic and tone. Was there anything outside the Fallout universe that served as inspiration for the look, story or tone of this? Well, I hope so. We always talked about Canticle for Leibowitz as uh, a novel that we absolutely loved, um, which is a, a po very strange uh, post-apocalyptic story. Um, and it has a lot of the sort of elements of sort of some of the semi-religious aspects of the Brotherhood of Steel in it. And it's all about sort of finding uh, relics from uh, the world before the bombs were dropped and, uh, and worshipping and worshipping them. So that was very inspirational for the world. Worshipping them. Okay, so they've gone for like the Western kind of cult-like brotherhood of still, I guess, worshipping free war technologies that they find. That's, I wouldn't say it's like traditional brotherhood of still, but it's kind of like, it's definitely like the extreme twist on it. From your perspective, what makes a Fallout story a Fallout story? It has to be fucked up. <laughs> uh, on a really cursory, basic, basic level, just a bit, a bit fucked up. That's super accurate. I think that's one of the reasons everyone loves the world of Fallout, because it's not just a post-apocalyptic environment. It's also this kind of messed up, screwed, kind of wacky world where with like the junk jet that fires garbage at people and, and wacky inventions like this. That's what makes Fallout Fallout. There's more sophisticated answers, but I just had a lot of barbecue, so I'm... I'm... <laughs> I think that's the perfect answer. I mean, the tone was always what we talked about as the thing that was most sacred to us. Uh, you know, there are... Fallout is obviously one of the greatest video games of all time, but for me, what makes Fallout so unique within the category of, like, best video games of all time is its tone. It's that it's funny, it's weird, it's also full of action. Like, it's, it has all those facets to it, and so for us, like, if we were like, if we nail the tone to us, we've nailed the show. And of course, we could say, like, you also need story elements that pull from the mythology you know we there is such a wealth of astonishing creativity that the hundreds of people who've worked on the games for 25 years have brought that really the problem for Graham and I and Jonah as we all worked on this was leaving things out was excruciating because they're just there's so much you love it always has an element of what would you do to survive and people are going to make difficult choices and the bad guys aren't always necessarily the bad guys and good guys aren't necessarily the good guys with the element of this romanticism of the past mm -hmm. and the naivete of what the nuclear future is going to bring and then it collapses. So you have this romanticism of the past mixed with the harsh reality and decisions that you have to make in your present. Given that we're all understandably wary of spoilers, is there something that each of you is most excited for people to see once this sets out. I'm sure other folks are going to say talk about the armor, so I'll go with Mr. Handy. Uh, I I just love the uh, Jonah's work is remarkable, and that he he insists on building as much as we can practically. So we had this. That's so important. I feel like that's why you know Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings was so successful because everything was just built and crafted by hand by Weta Workshop, and then you look at like Rings of Power and. Things just seem a bit fake and a bit CGI, and it's also really hard for the actors to act things out in it. So I'm very glad to hear that they've done that with Fallout. This physical, uh, very funny sort of puppet, essentially, uh, to work with, and for me, just seeing that come to life uh, with the actor that we've uh, that we have voicing him, um, I'm really excited for fans to see. I'm simply going to harvest your organs. <laughs> So after hearing that and seeing the trailer, I'm actually pretty excited for the Fallout TV series. And it has made me go back and replay Fallout 4. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.